The messages you are about to hear were first given on our daily radio broadcast. Woodrow Kroll is the speaker, and this series of four messages is entitled, The Father Revealed Through Calvary. This is part one. Now it's a privilege for me to introduce Dr. Woodrow Kroll. Thank you, Herman Rolfs. Folks, I'd like to begin today by asking you a question. Do you know God? If you said yes, how do you know Him? What is the source of your information? Do you know the God of the Bible by learning of Him from the Bible? Or do you know God because, well, everybody knows something about God? The Scottish essayist Thomas Carlyle said, What this country needs is a man who knows God other than by hearsay. Oh, he's so right. To know God adequately, we must know Him personally. And to know Him personally, we must see God as a loving, caring Father, one who gave His Son to be our Savior. Now, I think the best way to see God as a Father is to view Him through the cross of Calvary. Seeing the Father through Calvary gives the most intimate look at God, who He is, and what He's done for you. Now, beginning today on Back to the Bible, we want to see the Father through the cross. We want to see today the sovereignty of God, looking through the cross to see the sovereign Father. Many view the crucifixion of Jesus as a cruel and tragic accident, but God doesn't. It was part of the plan of God from before the foundation of the world. You see, God is in control. God is sovereign. And a sovereign God could have kept his son from the cross had he wanted to. But keeping Christ Jesus from the cross was the last thing on God's mind. To view God through Calvary's cross is to see his sovereign hand controlling all the events that led up to the crucifixion and all the events that occurred while Jesus hung on the cross. God was in control through it all. Now, today, let's see what some of those events are. Let's see how he controlled things leading up to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. First, notice that God controlled all the circumstances. If the cross was a tragic accident, you would not anticipate it, would you? I mean, no one anticipates an accident. If Jesus' death at Calvary were an unsuspected surprise, God would not be sovereign. But it wasn't a surprise, because the sovereign Father controlled every circumstance that led up to the crucifixion. How do I know? Well, the Bible tells me so. Again and again, the Old Testament writers predicted events that were fulfilled on that day at Calvary. The cross was no surprise. Years before, God had inspired these seers and prophets to write of these crucifixion events. Take the prophet Isaiah as an example. In Isaiah 50, he prophetically spoke of the Messiah's obedience to the Father. Verse 5 says, The Lord God has opened my ear. And I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. Now, there are striking fulfillments of these events at Calvary, aren't there? In the Garden of Gethsemane, before his crucifixion, the Lord Jesus said, Not as I will, but as you will. See, he was not rebellious to the Father. He gave his back to those who beat him, first to the scribes and elders, and then to the Roman soldiers, Matthew 26 and 27. Jesus said to the high priest, Hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Now, that was more than this high priest could take. He tore his clothes and he accused Jesus of blasphemy. The elders and the scribes in the room said, He is deserving of death. And Matthew 26, 67 says, They spat in his face and beat him. Others struck him with the palms of their hands. You see, long before Jesus was taken into custody, the sovereign God controlled the events of the crucifixion so that Isaiah's prediction would be remarkably fulfilled. And Isaiah was not alone. Zechariah predicted that the Messiah would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, exactly as he was. 
David prophesied that Messiah would be given vinegar or sour wine to drink, and that soldiers would divide Jesus' garments and cast lots for them. Oh, and many, many other prophecies of the Old Testament were fulfilled that day. Now, the Father could inspire these writers to predict these events, because as the sovereign God, He controlled these events. He knew they would come to pass because as sovereign, he would make them come to pass. See the Father as the sovereign God through Calvary's cross. He controlled every circumstance at Jesus' death. But not only did God control all the circumstances that led up to the death of the Lord Jesus, he also controlled the timing. Perhaps even more remarkable is that God controlled the timing of all the events that took place at the crucifixion. They didn't just happen one afternoon near Passover. The sovereign God planned them to happen at that time. Now, you have to understand that God is above time. He is eternal. He is not bound by time. What he does may take place in time, but it was planned long before time began. But while God is above time, maybe you've noticed that when he acts in time, He is very conscious of time. Jesus was not just born in a Bethlehem stable one night. He was born at a time chosen by the sovereign God. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Galatians 4.4 So frequently, Jesus made reference to time in his days here on earth. In fact, often he told people he helped not to say anything about what he had done because it was not yet time for him to reveal himself as Savior and Messiah. When he cleansed a leper, Jesus said, See that you tell no one. Matthew chapter 8, verse 4. Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, but he charged her parents to tell no one what had happened. Luke chapter 8, verse 56. Once Jesus asked his disciples who they thought he really was, Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, now, of course, Peter was right, but Jesus commanded his disciples to tell no one that he was Christ. You see, it wasn't yet time. Matthew 16, verse 20. And even at his transfiguration on that mountain, it was still not time to reveal his true identity. Mark chapter 9, verse 9 says, Now as they came down from the mountain, he commanded them that they should tell no one the things they had seen till the Son of Man had risen from the dead. You see, Jesus didn't want to reveal his true identity too soon, not until God began to unfold the events of the crucifixion week. The sovereign God would control the timing of Jesus' death. Not the howling mob, the sovereign God. So in Matthew chapter 21, verse 5, at Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, at the beginning of the Passion Week, the Lord said, Tell the daughters of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a colt, a donkey, the foal of a donkey. Now, why did he say to make that announcement? Because it was time. It was time to reveal his true identity. God controlled every event of time that led up to the crucifixion. He controlled all the circumstances, and he controlled the timing. The timing of the crucifixion was not haphazard. It was not accidental. It was at the exact moment planned by the Heavenly Father. You may remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night before his crucifixion, Jesus said to his disciples, Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Matthew 26, verse 45. You see, Jesus clearly understood God's timetable. And now, it was time. Do you want to know God better? Do you want to see the Father in a new light? Well, if you do, see the Father through Calvary. 
It will help you see him as a sovereign God, completely in control of every detail of life, both of his eternal son and of your own son or daughter, and of your life as well. God controls all things, even the circumstances and the timing of his son's death. Oh, but there's more. Not only does God control the circumstances and timing, when it comes to the crucifixion, God controlled the natural elements as well. You know, one of the great evidences of God's sovereignty seen during the crucifixion and death of the Lord Jesus is the evidence of God's control over nature. Now, obviously, the one who created nature can control it. He is sovereign. He is over his creatures. You would expect God to be able to control his, his creation, his nature. But nowhere is this aspect of God's sovereignty better seen than when Jesus was crucified at Calvary. Now, I would tell you this. Make a list sometime of the supernatural events, those events that occurred at Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. I did, and here's what I came up with. God's control of the elements is seen in extended darkness throughout the center of the day. Darkness from noon until 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Now, all of the unnatural events that occurred that day, his control was seen in every one of them. God controlled everything while Jesus hung there on the cross and while he was raised from the tomb. Listen to this fascinating account by Matthew. Matthew says, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Jesus, when he cried out again with a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Now, I suppose today this would have all the makings of a Stephen King horror movie. But God the Father demonstrated his sovereignty over nature. He directed the most frightening events to occur in a single town, in a short space of time. Now, why do you suppose that is? It is, my friends, because the sovereign God controlled everything that related to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. And yet these frightening events were designed to reveal his Son, Messiah, Savior, and risen Lord. The time had come. No more guessing. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is Lord. And we gain grand insight into the sovereignty of the Father by viewing him through the crucifixion. He controlled it all. He orchestrated it exactly as he planned it before the world began. He was entirely in control. Oh, my friend, Jesus Christ was not killed that day. He gave up his life just as the Father planned. Do you want to see the Lord Jesus in a new light? Do you want to see the Holy Spirit in a new light? Do you want to see God the Father in a new light? Look at them through the cross. As you read the crucifixion story, focus some of your attention on God the Father. I think you'll understand him better and appreciate him more if you remember that nothing took God by surprise at Calvary. Oh, he planned it all. He orchestrated it all. He sovereignly controlled everything that took place. Yes, he could have spared his son from the pain and the anguish of the cross. But that wasn't his plan. You see, friends, if he had, God could not have saved you and me. Why don't you take some time today and thank him for his sovereign control? <laughs> 